there is some loud music outside my window uh, I've kept it open because it gets hot otherwise I don't use AC so let's see how bad the sound is in the recording uh, and since I've grown a little goatee the mic has to be kept uh, in the right place otherwise I get some noise <laughs> So part three of the book is multiple benefits of nature-based solutions. You remember we are looking at nature-based solutions for cities in this book. We looked at part one and two. So here the chapter, first chapter in this section is just nature-based solutions as critical urban infrastructure for cooling and cleaning air sheds. Uh, when I saw that rich communities had swimming pools, AC and trees and poor communities had no bus shelters, pools, trees or AC, well you can immediately understand the health disparities and implications ensuring there are representatives from those communities at the table from the beginning. For example, the stories that were collected from residents, the centrality of this really matters. Okay, so how to get people uh, to express their despair and lack of amenities, public services, infrastructure. So here is a poor man in an urban center. Outside workers, there is the green infrastructure, nature-based nature solutions. There is a vehicle emitting plenty of uh, pollution. People have umbrellas, people have ACs, but maybe these uh, warehouse looking things, public uh, housing, let's say, do not have ACs and so on. The temperature here is uh, almost 45, 50, uh, no, that's 42 degrees centigrade. So that's very, very hot. Uh, so we'll look at this figure here, uh, but let's just look at the note first. These are the three scales of air sheds for planning, design, and engineering. So we'll come back and look at these. But the note here is that people's experience with atmospheric conditions includes objective measures of surface temperatures, air temperatures, radiation, gaseous pollutants and particulate matter. People's experience is mediated by our ability to adapt our atmosphere directly around our human bodies or air shed. So we wear sweater when it's cold and we uh, try to wear light clothes when it's hot so the body can uh, get rid of the heat with um, s by sweating and so on or you need ACs, fans, shade etc. Concepts such as thermal comfort integrate objective and subjective measures for a more holistic description of thermal experience through a combination of public and private shelters technology for example heating ventilation air conditioning car buses and trains public transportation can become critical for people who don't have vehicles and I don't know why this does this um, okay uh, and greening so here again let me read it through a combination of public and private shelters and technology such as heating ventilation air conditioning cars buses and trains and greening we can moderate our air sheds through artificial or natural processes differences in affluence uh, allow some people to use semi-private or private air sheds to protect them and their families from public air shed heat and air pollution hazards while others are more reliant on public uh, indoor so public housing public transit public cooling centers or outdoor air sheds such as parks streetscapes uh, schools and other public spaces as we move from the touch human site scale we become part of a neighborhood community air shed with diverse experiences in public, uh, semi-public and private air sheds. At the city level, research shows that some neighborhoods community air sheds are more degraded, hot with poor air quality than other neighborhood air sheds. So even in the same city, you can have neighborhood level air sheds that are very different. And this requires city level policy and management to reduce inequitable distribution of atmospheric hazards so I have a phone call here give me a second resume pause recording okay so I think I'm now recording <laughs> this is a nightmare got uh, disturbed there okay the so three scales of airship planning design and engineering here oops sorry so airship scales for planning and design 
Uh, what are we looking at? Airsheds are nested indoor plus outdoor atmospheric and surface thermal features at a variety of scales. So you have city policy and management scales, so composed of public, semi-public and private indoor and outdoor airsheds with intra-neighborhood segregation of public airsheds. So you're looking at a large scale and then you zoom in to neighborhood and community scale composed of public, semi-public and private indoor and outdoor airsheds. You zoom in further and you get everyday touch human site experiential scales. So you have human scale airshed when you're walking around, human experiences with the uh, airshed you are uh, in at the moment including touch surfaces whether it's a backpack the floor uh, or uh, you're holding a child and so on and so forth so there are some details there in terms of mean and uh, average temperatures uh, private material uh, gaseous pollution so particulate matter and gaseous pollutants and so on or you can also have indoor private car airshed, indoor private home airshed, semi-private outdoor plus indoor private single family residential home and so on and so forth. So rich neighborhoods have more, may have more greenery, more water bodies, uh, more uh, air conditioners running as well. So the heat action planning guide for neighborhood of greater phoenix actually tried to address this as you know phoenix can get tremendously hot fortunately it remains fairly dry so shade can f make it feel 10 degrees cooler compared to direct sun so creating urban heat solutions in the valley of the sun in arizona cover of heat action planning uh, guide by nature schooling system is a report from 2019 a bit old but nonetheless uh, you would want a heat action planning process of nature schooling systems partnership and four-step relationship building approach as reported in this paper here so you have step one two three four you have a core team that's interacting with municipal decision makers other community-based organizations and technical advisors. Community-based community -based organizations have residents and, uh, you know, different levels of residents here. So you are dealing with, uh, let's say, different level of uh, decision makers, uh, community-based organizations and technical advisors. So kind of a schematic, but you can see the feedbacks happening. So hopefully s residents have agency and can feed into policies and infrastructure, uh, green infrastructure and cooling centers, public transportation and so on and so forth. If you look at the illustration by Nature Schooling System from this report again, Nature Schooling System criteria for neighborhood selection. You have criteria for selection of neighborhoods in terms of heat. So low vegetation coverage, low vegetation index, high surface temperature and usage, so high use of public spaces and high transit use. You have history and opportunity playing a part, so high percentage of vacant lots, invitation for from community, uh, slated housing renovation or capital improvement projects, and you have community level activities, strong sense of community identity, potential for mutual learning, so residents as stakeholders and previously surveyed for uh, various levels of people's thermal comfort perception and measure temperatures, humidities and so on. Health and vulnerability indices, uh, high rate of heat, heat deaths, high related sorry heat related illnesses low income people uh, high rates of self reported heat concerns and lack of air conditioning and so on so you choose these as criteria uh, for selection of neighborhoods for s nature's c cooling system uh, okay so if you think of community process with urban heat demonstration projects at the core to show visible progress towards uh, cooling. So I'm picking random figures as you can imagine from this chapter. They themselves have been picked from different reports and papers. So here you have collective action versus bridging and linking social capital. So it's the goodwill, it's the cultural value, the norms in terms of uh, helping the vulnerable etc. So you have 
upper up here uh, collective action to participation uh, bringing to bonding social capital and feeding back to bridge, bridging linking social capital with implementation engagement and design workshop leading to plans and a iterative process that leads to urban heat demonstration project okay so why is it demonstration because it has to be implemented financed somehow and sustained and then metrics have to be set up to um, monitor evaluate and uh, make adjustments as necessary uh, for making sure that it's achieving its purpose with effectiveness and efficiency and uh, continued financing is available. Continuing, key cooling solutions for the three heat action planning neighborhoods. This is again from the Nature Cooling System TMC. So you have Edison Eastlake reimagining bus stops to include relief from heat. So you have bus shelters maybe with air conditioning or fans. So you have shade uh, bus stops, trees and water bodies and you have Lindo Rossley so secure funds for maintenance of large shade trees okay it's not easy especially in a dry place like Phoenix you cannot just plant the trees and leave them there because it's a desert area they have to be uh, watered and maintained till they become self-sustained so you have drinking water access in public spaces sprinklers or splash pads for children so that children can play in the uh, sprinklers uh, to cool down while also staying outside and getting some exercise outdoor time and so on so you have overlapping regions with unique dual function shade structures here and you have improved street and walkway shading for transit here okay so you know these are still schematics but obviously they are easily translated into plans and implementation and then engage stakeholders and improve the plans and then have a uh, planning process so through the planning process the partnership identified several barriers to cooling with nature-based solutions in this uh, nature schooling system the nature schooling system relatively low community involvement in formal city processes to advocate for cooling high heat days result in no good health choices either be hot outside or face expensive bill for air conditioning at levels to provide health and comfort so for poor people even if there is AC let's say you're renting an apartment air conditioning is provided but you pay the utility bill so you're trying to minimize the use of air conditioning Mature shade trees cost homeowners too much to maintain and, consec and consequently die. Dead trees are a physical and financial barrier to planting new trees. So ho homeowners are responsible for getting rid of the dead trees and it can cost a lot of money to have it chopped down and transported away. Rental properties where many low income residents live do not have many trees because landlords do not want trees because of the cost and ongoing maintenance obligations. So if you're a rental property owner you may be reluctant to put trees and provide nature-based solutions to help the tenants. Shared discourse that Arizona is hot and nothing can be done to change the climate. This is a problem when you think about planning process. Uh, cooling strategies that are current options can take five to ten years for city capital improvement projects. Squeaky wheel residents with more time, resources and access to power receive cooling investments so they can complain a lot and get attention in terms of investments in uh, cooling. This reinforces systematic environmental racism, injustice and disinvestment. So businesses may not come if the neighborhood is very hot and people don't get out when it's very hot, stay inside, uh, business drops and all kinds of other things can happen and uh, just in a kind of a digression there is also evidence that violence tends to go up when the uh, heat is too high. Okay, new cooling ideas may require higher cost or trade-offs than established infrastructure practices. Existing legacy grain infrastructure is a barrier to implementing new ideas such as moving underground or overhead utilities to make space for such NBS as tree planting. Okay, so this is the next.
chapter so maybe I should leave it here but we are again talking about uh, you know issues of monitoring so dimension of nature based solutions for water resilience and then we'll also come back and look at airshed uh, in the following chapters okay so you have extreme rainfall urban heat island effects and so on combining uh, to cause uh, evaporation and runoff and nutrient pollution sediment loading problems etc so you are seeing here uh, schematic nature based solutions on how the uh, stream flows are being handled with uh, monitoring going on for water quality and so on and so forth so we'll come back and do that in the next podcast okay so I hope this is recorded uh, because I paused it and restarted it and it's always tricky when I do that. Mm -hmm.